Good morning. It's great to be in the, uh, in the region, great to be with you in such an important uh, part of the world for GE. And no matter what business you're in, uh, I would just kind of start today by saying uh, what we're talking about today is probably the single most important thing that's going to intersect in your world uh, in the coming years. So I'm a long-term uh, GE guy. I've been around uh, the business world for a long time. This is the, a real initiative. It's the biggest initiative inside the company today, and it's going to intersect with all of your, uh, all of your lives. First, the macro. You know, again, a lot of people uh, always ask me what's going on in the world. I just say we live in a time of slow growth, of volatility, and of populism. We really, really, and, and I see that in every part of the world. And from a business person's standpoint, if you're waiting for some kind of magic sign, you're going to get left behind. So in GE, we believe in investing through the cycles. We believe in driving productivity for ourselves and for our customers. And we know you have to be fast to be successful in the world today. So very simple principles about how we see the world. Uh, the company today is, uh, 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 this day will complete the uh, Alstom acquisition for GE. So really the world's uh, biggest industrial company focused on solving big problems. We try to make our breadth uh, work for our customers through what we call the GE store. We're very engaged in the digital industrial. So this intersection that really is what Minds and Machines is all about. At our size, with eight big businesses in 175 countries around the world, we can only uh, succeed if we're fast. And really try to drive uh, value for our employees, for our investors, for our customers. This is really GE on a page and, and what we're all about. Now, to set the stage for uh, where, where we are, I think, economically with the world, um, you know, the Internet's not new. It's created very valuable companies. Clearly, if you look at the S&P 500 or if you look at it from an investor standpoint, extremely valuable uh, uh, companies. And, and really, the consumers have benefited. When you look at the amount of media that goes online or the amount of shopping that goes online, it's extraordinary. But if you're an industrial company, like the people in the audience, like you and like me, basically our productivity is slowed. Productivity globally averaged 4% between 1990 and 2010, and it's 1%. So, so the challenge for everybody in this room, and I would argue particularly right now in the world we live in today, is productivity. And so it's our turn now. It's the industrial internet's turn to really drive massive value and massive change, massive speed, cost down, and, and really this is really why I'm here today and what's really important in terms of uh, where we are. Now, our aspiration is to really take this great industrial company and become a top 10 software company in the next few years, by 2020. And we do that by uh, driving more software sales. We're already at about $6 billion on a run rate basis. We'd like to make that $10 billion. We, we're actually offering an operating system called Predix that we think can intersect with our customers. And we want to drive our own internal productivity. So we talk about digital industrial. We have strong financial goals. But what it really means from a customer standpoint is really driving customer outcomes. So there's a lot of fancy words that you'll hear people talk about, industrial internet, internet of things. But the way to really think about it, if you're in this room, is no unplanned downtime more speed, more asset optimization, more profitability, number one. It's really the intersection of the physical world and the analytical world is really critical. It's important to build an ecosystem. You know, in other words, there's, there's people in this room today that are horizontal companies. So you need a platform to be successful. But really, what, what the industrial internet about, or, or what this is about, is the intersection between software and domain. And in order to get the benefits, the domain is equally important to the software and the analytics. So it's this ecosystem that's really critical. We're doing this inside GE. So we're executing everything you see around the room. We're doing it in our own factories, in our own engineering centers, in our own service organizations. It really repositions the chief information officer. The chief information officer becomes really the key to all of this, to unlocking this value. And that's new, and that's different in the industrial world. And we want to move fast. 
So when we talk about the digital industrial, it's con customer outcomes, physics and analytics, ecosystem, uh, digital thread, CIO. These are the big ideas that you're going to hear the rest of the morning that I hope you leave with in terms of what's possible to drive change. Now, we didn't go to bed one night and wake up the next morning and say, geez, we have to be a software company or else we're not going to be able to be successful. We really follow science. And science today is just the intersection of physical products, jet engines, gas turbines, MR scanners, locomotives, and analytics so that every product has a digital twin. It allows you to think about things no longer as a fleet, but as a unit of one. You can measure changes in product real time. You can do it continuously. You can tune. You can, you can take things and make them scalable and adaptable uh, that you can do in the digital age. So you no longer have to think about all of these, all of these assets in averages. You can do specifics. You can predict failure before it occurs. You can optimize the way assets work in a fleet. And this is how you drive productivity in the world today. And what we can do is we can combine 100 years of knowledge about how materials work, the physics of our products, and marry that with real-time data and analytics that really can drive power. So this is change. This is happening. We've been working on it inside the company for really 10 years now. And, and it's essential that we uh, drive forward. Now again, we've seen growth from three billion to six billion. We've been doing mines and machines uh, every year, and we've made big investments in California and around the world. We've got really a trillion dollars of assets under management today. We built strong industry partnerships. You're, you'll hear later today the investments we've made in security because we think that's essential in terms of the uh, uh, driving progress. Uh, we've created a digital organization. So basically inside our company, we've linked IT and OT. We've linked information technology and digitization. And we think that's, those linkages are forever changed. And then what we're, what we're about today and really what, what the way we want to go forward is we, we want to drive uh, Predix as an operating platform and we want to build more partnerships in the region. So this has really been about momentum, and I think we're, we're really at a, at a tipping point now to make this happen even faster and even more significantly in the region. So Predix is something Bill Wu will talk about. It's something you'll hear during the day. This is an analytical operating system. So this is a horizontal system that is going to be open to all of you. And we're going to put GE assets on Predix, but we're going to put all your assets on Predix. We're going to allow you to write your own applications on Predix. And so this is an analytical platform, cloud-based, industrial strength, that has the ability to do asset monitoring. It has the ability to have security. It will allow you to get insights. And this is going to be an open system. We have, uh, we'll have 20,000 people writing on Predix. Uh, it's going to be adaptable. Uh, to our customers and to the industries. So one of the things that's going to differentiate uh, uh, between GE and our competitors is we're actually going to invest in the operating system. We think that brings us closer to you. It eliminates the need for a, a middleman, if you will. And so you can have direct access to the operations of the products and be able to do that in an operating system. And this is live today and has uh, tremendous potential today. And we're working with real customers in the region who are going to use Predix as their operating system and drive substantial uh, productivity and substantial gains as you go forward. So my point to you is this is real. You don't have to wait. There's no cartoons here today. This is, this is happening. And the output is what matters. Cost down, uh, uptime improvements, asset productivity, reality, reality. And to play, you know, really, this is going to be a combination of industrial companies uh, working together. And, and we can do it uh, together when you look at, uh, at the aspect of where we go. A couple examples. From an asset optimization standpoint, this is a digital wind farm. We have controls and software that will allow a developer, an operator of a wind farm, 
We can predict uh, changes in wind. We can tilt the blades of the wind farm. We can optimize the assets in the wind farm. So this is a suite of technologies that can improve the output by 20%. Substantial financial benefits when you do this. So this is a combination of software, analytics, and controls. Industrial application to a common uh, platform. We we'll also have a digital power plant. We can do virtual pipelines, right? Think about this not in the context of just a wind farm, but in the context of uh, uh, any industrial setting that you could imagine. This is a healthcare example. So for decades, we, we've had post-processing capability to take images off of radiology equipment, but now we're using Predix. We have the ability to use cloud technology to store the images in a secure way. It gives radiologists tremendous productivity to, to use these images where they need to. Uh, they can uh, uh, write their own applications and protocols as time goes on. So this brings all the power of analytics, image acquisition, cloud technology in one setting. So you can uh, drive uh, not just workflow advantages in a hospital to be more productive, but also better clinical outcomes. So the wind turbine was, was an example of one asset. Uh, healthcare is an example of multiple assets changing workflow, driving productivity. So real results available and, and driving tremendous change in, in industry. Now we believe in an ecosystem. This, this just is an example for oil and gas, but I could do this for any one of our businesses. And we look at asset performance and operations of the field and market performance. We have a, a, a series of current applications. We have a, a number of applications in development but we also are going to encourage people in, in a broader array, entrepreneurs, uh, people in this room that want to write their own applications. And at the end of the day, you're going to be able to have a suite of, of uh, uh, applications if you're an oil and gas customer that can measure the health of the pipeline, uh, how the pipeline works in, or, or how the assets are working in concert with other parts of the operation, uh, risk management, operations planning, ERP. Uh, this is expansive. Again, this, this opens up tremendous opportunity, and our proposition to you is that we work on this together. That ultimately, our vision is industrial strength analytics with deep domain knowledge that drives real performance, where customers and GE are writing applications together to drive change. So tremendous uh, application ecosystem. Now, as I said earlier, we're also investing inside GE and building our own digital thread. And the focus we're, we're on is driving uh, better engineering tools, better manufacturing tools, and better service tools. So one, some of the examples that we see today are the ability to develop products uh, more quickly. The H-Turbine, which is our latest power generation product, is being introduced in half the time that the F-Turbine was introduced. In manufacturing, uh, we have about uh, 400 factories in GE, 100 are what we call brilliant factories that are completely digitized in terms of how we manufacture, how we, how we run workflow. And I'm probably most excited about uh, services because everybody in here has a maintenance challenge. And in the case of GE, we have 30,000 technicians, multiple service shops, and these are going to be completely digitized from the standpoint of how we manage labor, how we, how we do repairs, how we track uh, uh, predictive maintenance, predictive failure. And so our notion is that all these tools that we're working on are going to be available to our customers. That basically our own digital thread is going to be open to how our customers look at, uh, at their world as well. And this is just an example from a manufacturing setting on how we're working with uh, Procter & Gamble in the, in the manufacturing setting where we're really sharing between GE facilities and what our customers uh, want to see. So again, this is probably the, the most uh, direct linkage in my career that I've seen between the future of our customers or the performance of the customers and, and, and how we're intersecting with them because it's all going to be outcome-based. More productivity, more value, that's how it gets created. Now, I would, I would just end with a couple ideas. In this world, the chief information officer is uh, 
is king, or maybe I should say the chief information officer is sheik in, in, this, uh, uh, in, the, in this setting. You know, I'd say the chief information officer has gone from being a backroom function in the old world, industrially, to a front room function in the new world, in terms of uh, where it goes. And the ability of the chief information officer to drive uh, 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 better investments, uh, to be really the leader of how this works, to be a co-creator, if you will, of software and applications, will be extremely important. So intersecting with the chief information officer, linking them with operations, is really going to be key to unlocking the value in the world of the industrial internet. So extremely, uh, extremely important interface. And lastly, you know, just uh, our aspirations. $15 billion software company. Uh, we, we, our goal is to achieve a billion dollars of customer savings. Uh, we think the uh, economy, the ecosystem, is going to be uh, several hundred billion dollars, and that's been confirmed by Gartner and other groups uh, in this setting. We want to have 100,000 developers on Predix. We want to have them in this room. We want to have them at Emirates and, and uh, Aramco and, and other big companies in the region. Uh, there's going to be, we think, uh, more than 500,000 apps as we get started uh, in, this, in this space. Uh, and again, just tremendous growth in productivity and in the GDP. So what you've seen in the press release today is that there's going to be a regional technology center uh, in uh, the Middle East in aviation, oil and gas, and, uh, and uh, power that we're going to be co-creating with customers, many of whom are, are in this room. Uh, that cyber is really going to be critical in terms of uh, 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 development. You'll hear one of the presentations today on, on where cyber fits. So uh, all of this is happening, all of it's real, and it's, all of it's going to be happening in the region. So industrial internet may be a concept or maybe a fancy word, but it's happening today. Uh, it's going to happen in this region. Uh, we want to lead because we think this is the future of our products. Maybe if you go to bed in an industrial company in the world today, you're going to wake up as a software and digital company in the future. We believe that this is going to extend co-creation with our customers, that there's going to be massive amounts of productivity and economics, and we're here today investing in the future alongside you and with you uh, because we think it's uh, significantly uh, important to the future growth. So we look forward to a great morning to share ideas. Uh, we really uh, uh, very much appreciate uh, the attendance and time that you put here today. You'll have a chance to see all of the reality as you walk around. And again, it's uh, great to be with you. And with that, I'll introduce uh, Bill Rue to take you forward and explain how it works. Thanks. Good.